Come on in, welcome to my home. So today, on this rainy day, I thought I would show you what I would normally do. Well, sort of. Normally on a rainy day like today, I like to sit down and read a book, and what better way to show you what kind of books I read than show you what's on my bookcase. We're going to go through my books, I'll tell you a little bit about them, and these are the books that I have kept. Now, there are lots of books, that's books that are in my e-reader, and if you want to know about those, let me know down in the comments. But these are the books that I keep because I have a tendency to go back to them, reference them, that sort of thing. But they are books that I really enjoy or I use as reference a lot. So let's jump into it and I'll give you one or two sentences about the books and tell you why I like them. Because this could be a long video, but luckily I've gotten rid of a lot of books because I then have digital versions of the ones that I don't really need to keep. So let's do it. So this first stack of books comes from my bookcase and I use books to decorate my house. And these are the books that I use, which basically you'll notice that they are white, so I use them for their white color. Save the Cat by Blake Snyder is a book if you are interested in doing screenwriting, which I really would like to do sometime. The DIY Do-It-Yourself Cookbook. This has some really great recipes. You can make all sorts of things. And so I've used a couple of those recipes. Designing for the Screen. This really helps if you want to work on your designing for your house, making your house look more like the TV shows or films that you see with a moody, a less trendy look. This is a great book to help you move down that way. The Home Edit. If you're ever wondering what, book, what stuff you want to keep in your house or how you want to put it in your house, great book for that. It will show you how you can go through your house and look at tons and tons of things and how you should style it. A Southern Bell Primer. This is one of those books where if you just want to laugh out loud, it is a great book to look at how things are done in the South at a certain time of life. I did not realize how many Southern traditions that my family had until I read this book. It is a quick read and it is really funny. The Filmmaker's Guide to Production Design, once again, is another one of those books that helps me with trying to get a more moody look, a more f interesting feeling to the house without doing something trendy. Because if you think about all of the houses that you've seen in videos or in TV shows, movies, very rarely are they trendy, unless they're a villain, and they have more of that moody feel, and this helps give, give you the idea of how to do that. The Home Edit Workbook. This is one of those things which goes along with the Home Edit books because it helps you work through all of the ways that you can look at how you can keep your items organized and think about what things you need to keep, what things you do not need to keep. The Bullet Journal, as you know, I for a while was really, really into bullet journaling using my bullet journal physical book. Now I do it digitally, but this is Ryder Carroll's uh, book, and it also talks about what the different things that you would use for bullet journaling are. If you are interested in getting into true bullet journaling, that is not what you see uh, on most bullet journals. Most bullet journals are planners versus bullet journaling is journaling using bullets. This might not be those for you who want to do the planning part or the really fancy thing, but this might be a great book for those who are just interested in journaling. The Home, ed the home Edit Life. This is a great book for organizing everything. You notice I have the home edit, which is just about editing your home. This takes this encompasses everything that you have. It is a nice book to read. I have gone back and referenced this quite often. As you know from watching my channel and seeing my garden, I am very much into plants and herbs. This book is one of those great books, The Modern Herb Dispensary. If you are interested in making it um, and knowing anything about herbs and their medicinal properties, great book to have, great reference to have. 
One of the things I will say is if you are going to do medical herbs, please, please talk to a medical professional before you decide to do anything like that. But this book is a really great way to learn about those sort of things. Home Comforts. Now this is a really interesting book. This is the science of keeping a home, making your house look really nice. It breaks down all those different little things from how often you should clean, what you should clean with. It is a great book. It is a reference book. You'll find that this is not one of those, let's read it from cover to cover books. This is one of those books that you're going to read to see how you can do things, and it is quite in depth. Now we're into my antique books, and some of these are really interesting. This book, which was published in, I think, in 1859. Yes, 1859. This is the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was, has been in the family since 1859. It's one of those old books I've held on to because I do believe this would have been my great-great-grandparent's book. And it tells the story of Jesus. This one's an interesting one. This one is the Family Bible. And this has lots and lots of information about our family in it. Trying to turn the pages delicately. There we go. It is very old. And in the pages in here, there's a family history. It was published in Mansfield, Ohio. It has some really wonderful illustrations. And what I love about it, you get lots and lots of pages like this. The publishing date was in the 19 teens, I do believe. I'm trying to, I guess it was in the 1800s because it's already stamped with the 1880. And I do believe that this was presented to my great grandparents. There we go. But yeah, it is one of our old historic books. If you want to hear more about this book, just let me know, and we can probably go through this now. Here's an interesting one. This has always been known as the Book of the Dead. You're like, but it's just a telephone book log. And I'm like, yeah, I would agree with you. Until you get back into here. For whatever reason at the time, my great-grandmother started this, where she wrote down the names of the people who she knew who had died. It has their date that they died and their name. We're not sure exactly why the Book of the Dead was created, and it ended shortly, ended a few years before she died. But yeah, this is the Book of the Dead. We've kept it because a lot of times we reference the Book of the Dead as in like, why? Why did they keep something like this? But it is a really interesting book because it is pretty old. It goes back into the 1920s. So yeah, that's pretty cool. The book itself came out in 1945, as you can see from right there. I don't know if you can see that, but yes. The telephone book was created in 1945. Here's some fun, more fun pamphlets and books from my great grand from my grandmother. And this is The Child. And it's just things that new mothers would learn, how they could take care of their kids, and that sort of thing. I think this dates back to the 1920s, but I do not believe that there is a um, date on this book. But yeah. Then the, my grandfather used to be a bartender. So this is a book which is all about, it's a quiz book, I think he took a bartending class and so this book was all about bartending and I think in that class they had to learn all the facts that they could and it is the book that they used to 
learn about that. Another one of those cool things, hardware stoves and house furniture goods. I just think this is so cool. It was first printed, or this was, uh, the patent for this freezer is 1879. And look at all of these. These are so good. It shows you all the old refrigerators and freezers. I'm not sure what year this book came out in, but I love the historic part of it. That's really cool. Oh, a recipe. Then a cookbook of African Negro recipes. And this was my grandmother's. I'm trying to find a date on this. Of course, they weren't real good on making sure that everything had dates back then. But I do believe this is sometime in the 1940s. But yeah, it has lots of different recipes of the time. I just love this book. And it's fun to look back at the history of some of these recipes. And the cool part about this is my grandmother put in some recipes that we've left in the book. So that is always really, really cool. Since my channel is all about the home, I have quite a few books which are about the home and things how you can keep your house going, how you can figure out what your house is like, things that you should need. And these are quite interesting, the home manual. I would love one day to be a writer. And this is the Save the Cat Writes a Novel. This is a very successful series which came from the Save the Cat Writes a Screenplay. It teaches you how to write a novel. Mary's recipe is not what you think of this. Mary's recipe is for brewing things like making wine, beer, that sort of thing. I am interested in doing those sort of things. I do have the equipment to do it. If you are interested in me making some wine or beer, let me know down in the comments. Cheese making. I love the idea of making cheese. Now the problem with this is finding the ingredients to make cheese. It can be really rough to find them, but when you can, this book has all the sorts of resources that you would need to be able to make your own cheese. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but at one time I had a gaming channel. It was very small, and I played The Sims 4. This is The Sims 4 uh, concept art and book. It talks about how The Sims 4 was created, and all the interesting things that you would need to be able to play The Sims 4. I still love the game, I love watching videos on it, however I haven't played in a while. Another cheese making book! Yes! Making cheese is a bunch of fun. I've made lots of mozzarella, I've made butter, which is not a cheese. If you're interested in making cheese, learning how to make cheese, let me know. This is a great book. Che home cheese making. Mary Bell's Complete Dehydrator Cookbook. This is a great reference book. If you want to use your dehydrator to its fullest, this has all the information that you would need to dehydrate uh, food, dehydrate vegetables, herbs. Great reference book that you can, it has recipes for all sorts of things that you'd want to dehydrate in it. Love this book, and I love my dehydrator. Once again, another Save the Cat workbook, because yes, I would love to be a writer someday. Maybe one of these days I will be. But it is the workbook, and you can go through this. I've not started it yet, because, well, there's just not time. If you are interested in learning how to take food pictures, this is the book for you. It really does teach the fundamentals of food photography, how to plate things, how to do those sort of things. It is a great book, Plate to Pixel, Digital Food Photography and Styling. I highly recommend it if you're interested into getting into food photography. The Complete Illustrated Book of Herbs. 
I reference this all the time. I mean, like, all the time. It has all sorts of facts about the herbs that you'd want to know, how to grow them, how to use them. It is a great reference book for all sorts of things like that. And I do reference this a lot. It teaches me all sorts of things that I'd want to know about growing herbs and taking care of the herbs and sort of the history and traditions of the herbs. Here is something I really want to get into. Edible landscaping. If I ever get to the point where I have a home where I can actually have a yard, my landscape would be an edible landscape because I think there's nothing prettier than having a landscape that you can go out and pick things up. This is a great book for references. It gives you ideas. It gives you hints. The pictures are absolutely gorgeous and all the information is wonderful. Sloan's Victorian the Buildings. This is an amazing book if you want to talk about and you want to see about the history of buildings. Look at these buildings. And the cool part about this is it has some really neat, if I can find it, illustrations and floor plans and everything that you'd want to know about these buildings, how they were built, how they were designed. The pictures are amazing. Great book for information. Great Escapes, New Designs for Home Theaters. Oh, I've gone through this book for like hours on end simply because some of these home theaters are beyond belief. Can you imagine if that was your home theater? This has all sorts of beautiful pictures and ideas and inspiration. It's really fun. It's a lot of things to dream about. I would love to have a home theater that looked like this, or even turning a room into something like that. I know a lot of you might not know this about me, but I have taken a lot of classes in drafting and design. So these were my school books. This is the architectural drafting and design book. And if you want to learn about drafting and design, this book will teach you just about everything that you'd want to know. How to design your house, how to draft the house. It is not teaching you how to be an architect, but it will teach you all the things that you would want to know about designing a house. I've referenced this book a lot, and yes, I have a house design that I would love to build if I could get the money for it. If you're interested in learning about that house design or more of it, let me know down in the comments. Okay, Architecture, Residential, Drawing, and Design, another one of my class books. Um, this was the first one, and as you can see, my dog did chew on it. This was the first architectural design book that I had. And it, once again, teaches you all the things that you'd want to know about drafting and design. Great book. Okay, if you want to know more about building styles, building codes, that sort of thing, in a general information sort of setting, this is the book. It has all the information that you would need about space requirements, those sort of things, and it's broken out into different areas, schools, houses, buildings, this is a great reference book. I use this quite a bit. Building a story brand helps you create a brand or something that you would want for your business. I use this to get as far as I have on my YouTube channel, those sort of things. Once again, how to write a novel. Yes, I would love to be a person who writes a book. I'm working on it. The Art Direction Handbook for Film and Television. Once again, another one of those books that shows you how to design for interiors, exteriors of shots, which help make your shots, the backgrounds of them, more visual. This also helps with doing your house. If you think about your house like a movie set, you can then make a really nice looking house that people are very interested in. The Home Creamery. This is really good, once again, for making cheese, making butter, 
uh, then also doing things like uh, cream cheeses. This is a really good book for making those cheeses. As you know, I am a big fan of Irma Bombeck, and this is her A Marriage Made in Heaven or Too Tired for an Affair. This is one of the last books that she wrote. Um, it's not as funny as the other ones, but it does chronicle the history of her life and everything. So it is, a, she's my fa one of my favorite authors, so it's one of the books that I have. This was from a college that I went to, and believe it or not, I'm a published poet. I do have a poem in this from a long time ago, but yeah, so that's cool. The Congressional Club Cookbook. This cookbook was a gift from a friend of mine, and he got it for me because, of course, my YouTube channel. There are all sorts of recipes from the time. It is really cool. He got it, uh, of course, because of its age. He got it as a used book, and it's really neat. Published in 1965. I think that's really cool. The Encyclopedia of Cookery, once again, another one of those historic books. Look at this, from 1949. A few things have changed since then. An armadillo. Rarely ever do you see an armadillo mentioned in a cookbook. And it has a lot of recipes that were popular at the time. Pictures, those sort of things. This is a great place for inspiration. So those are the books that I have on my shelf that I go back to or I keep them for a specific reason. Most of my books are in my e-reader. This is a Kindle and I have Kindle Unlimited so that I can read tons and tons of their free books. Uh, if you're interested in knowing what's on my Kindle, let me know down in the comments. But I thought that for, an, for a rainy day where I couldn't really do so much because you'd be surprised how dark my place is right now because there's a lot of artificial light going on around here. Um, I thought this would be an interesting book because what an interesting video because what I like to do is I go through my shelves one shelf a day as I've talked about in that video and I clean out and get rid of books that I'm no longer going to read, I'm no longer going to use. I'm not one of these people who's going to keep a book just for the sake of keeping a book. Now if it's a reference book I'll, I'll keep it or if the book has a lot of meaning to me that sort of thing I will keep it but I find I'm more I'm more likely to just pick up my e-reader and read a book. And I do have a couple new books that I'm going to be reading very, very soon. I do make at least a half an hour a day to read my books. And what about you? What's on your bookshelf? What would you recommend that I read? I have gone through just about all of those books, uh, all the way through, read every, just about every page of every one of them because I find it very fascinating. And I think you can learn a lot about somebody by what books they decide to keep. These are the wonderful people who help keep this channel really going. Without them, I don't think that there would be a ability to be doing this channel. If you're interested in joining Patreon and seeing these videos early and getting early access and other things to this channel, you can check out Patreon. Let me know down in the comments what books you have, and I hope I get to see you again next time you stop by.